and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our response to Psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, you are just. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will be instructed in the way that he should be. His soul shall abide in well being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is the most superior, and he makes known to the end his son. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son.
hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant to us the same Spirit so that we may joyfully receive the message of Christ who has come for us all. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia and verse. Hard for you to spell upside down. Jesus 
team to do what? Save us from what? Our sins. Why do we have sins? The devil. The devil gave us a sin. Yeah. Right, here we go. J E S. What's next? You. You. What are we looking for? S. Another S. I don't know if that's a funny looking S, but there you go. So now we got God and we got Jesus. And by the time of Jesus is preaching on earth, is <coughs> dying on the cross to forgive our sins. Now we come to this day called Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to the disciples who were preaching. And what happened to those disciples' voices? What happened to their voices? Were they all speaking the same language? No, what were they speaking? The language of the people that came here. In the gospel today, or in, yeah, in the second reading today, it talked about people coming from Rome. Uh, Pastor? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, <laughs> residents of Mesopotamia. Thank you. Yeah. So, how were they able to do that? How were they able to speak in all those different languages? They weren't school guys. They didn't know how to do it. They didn't take French in school. It was with them, but oh, what else? It was who, who descended down and helped him speak. It, was, it talked about flames of fire, and it talked about what else? Angel. It got talked about wind. It talked about wind on the back. So the Holy what? Spirit. Spirit. Very good. Okay, what am I missing now? Looking for an R. Have you seen R? I. What's the last letter I'm looking for? Okay. In the beginning was God. God created the idea that we'd have to have Pentecost someday by giving many different languages. Jesus came to save the world by dying on the cross. But the third thing of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit. And on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and descended upon the disciples and allowed them to teach God's blessing, God's, salva God's salvation through his son Jesus to all the people there. Long ago, God punished those people, or he was discouraged about their sinful pride by confusing their languages. Now those people heard their language of God in their own words. No one can build a tower tall enough, even though we try to reach to God. God reaches down to us with who? How did God reach down for us, to us? With who? Jesus. Very good. People all around the world who believe in Jesus speak many languages, and we know that. On the Lutheran hour this morning was a, a fellow from Mexico, I believe, who spoke. Jesus loves you, he dies for you, and that's the good news in any language. Thanks for coming up.
pray. Holy Spirit, enter in us and work your works for our blessings and the blessings of others. Always point us to Jesus. Amen. At the end of a movie, when the credits are rolling, do you ever just keep watching beyond the main stars and read some of the titles of others that were involved in the production of the movie? If you do, you're going to see titles like Best Boy and Grip and Gaffer. The best boy is the one who manages the crew members in their departments. He's the one that schedules the work and hires the equipment. They're the ones for, that are responsible for having the right people and equipment at the right location and then setting up the lighting arrangements. That grip, that person is responsible for setting up and rigging up the lighting equipment on the set. And they're also responsible for keeping the equipment organized. And the gaffer hits the big boss. He's the chief lighting technician. He's the head electrician. He's the one that's responsible for the execution of the entire lighting plan for a movie. He's the one that oversees it all. You know, they're weird titles for sure. But these men and women, they play a vital role. They are the ones that are behind the scene workers. They get no recognition on the marquee, no name and lights. The star of the movie says starring, but you won't see the best boy or grip or gaffer's names till the end, almost kind of like a footnote. But as they say at the start of any movie production, it begins with lights, camera, and then action, and without the lights, there is no camera, there is no action. Behind the scenes, that's what we're celebrating today. We are placing one of the Trinity's workings at the forefront of our minds today. A part of the Trinity that often doesn't get the spotlight, maybe even barely a footnote. And yet, his role is so vital to faith and to our salvation story. You learned a long time ago in our conference learning about how the Father is celebrated as the creator, the maker of all things. He's, he as well is recognized as the provider of and for all, and, and rightly so. The Son, well, we all know that he's celebrated as the Savior, our Redeemer. It's Jesus who came into this broken and sin-filled world. He's the one who suffered and died by crucifixion. He's the one who rose three days later and then ascended. Also that forgiveness and rescue and a, a restored relationship and salvation would be ours. But we don't talk much about the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit, He is the one who is continually working behind the scenes in the role of sanctifier. The sanctification, that's a, a fancy word that just simply means making you and me holy. And he does it by bringing us to faith in Jesus so that we might cling to him in faith and so that we might enjoy the blessings of forgiveness and salvation. And in addition, it's the Holy Spirit who equips us, who power, empowers us to lead and to walk a godly life and to share our faith in Christ. The Spirit truly works behind the scenes in our daily life. And without His work, we wouldn't see Jesus for who He is as our Savior. We wouldn't look to the Father as our loving and gracious and compassionate Father. We wouldn't even look to Him at all. We wouldn't seek or know forgiveness, that contrition, that sorrow over our sins that leads to repentance, asking for forgiveness, that seeking to be empowered and changed. It wouldn't be our way of life if it weren't for the Holy Spirit. Even sharing our faith, having the words to say, pointing people to the hope that's ours in Jesus, it wouldn't be possible without the Spirit's hand in our lives. I mean, look at what the Spirit did for the disciples in our second reading for today. After the ascension of Jesus to heaven, 
The disciples are in Jerusalem. They're, they're waiting just as Jesus had told them. He said, wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So they're waiting. And as they're waiting, the disciples are pretty silent publicly. They're in hiding, really, most likely for fear of being hunted down themselves, being punished and possibly as Jesus was, they were afraid of crucifixion for them. And so they are keeping a low profile at this point, and yet they still held on in faith. We're told in Scripture that with one accord they were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. And then the moment came. The moment ten days after Jesus' ascension, the promise was fulfilled that Jesus said. And it involved a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It involved tongues as of fire, we're told, coming to rest on each one of them. A behind-the-scenes cameo appearance was going on. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, we're told. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, it was this presence of the Holy Spirit and the gift given, not, not some divine God language that no one understands. They were given the gift, the ability with the Holy Spirit working behind the scenes, empowering them. They were now out front. They were the visible supporting cast of the show, pointing to the main star about Jesus. We're told they started telling in our own language the mighty works of God. You see, with the Holy Spirit, the disciples were empowered. They were inspired to boldly proclaim, and it was bold because the accusations that Peter made. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. And Peter said, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will shall be saved. And then he said, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did for him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. He said, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, though, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. And then Peter went on. You know, the result of that day, even though they were saying that it's your fault that Jesus died because you didn't believe in him, you didn't embrace him. The result that day, as the Holy Spirit worked, was not only that the gospel good news was shared, but we're told about 3,000 souls were added to the number of believers. And in addition, the Christian church foundation that was being built on Jesus as head and chief cornerstone, that was unfolding now. This was all the work of the Holy Spirit working behind the scenes, working in people's hearts and minds, changing paths from death to life. And you know, the Holy Spirit is still at work behind the scenes now, in your life and in mine. From the moment of our conception, the Spirit began His work of planting the seeds of faith in our hearts and minds. Even in the womb, the Spirit was working His work for our salvation. And with the great gift of baptism, you and I were sealed with the Holy Spirit. We were fundamentally changed in our hearts and minds and to our core. You and I were marked as a child of God, one of His very own. The forgiveness that Jesus accomplished on the cross, it was poured out and it covered all of our sins. We were snatched from the devil's grasp, rescued from death and hell. We were given eternal salvation. And faith that you and I cling, that used to cling to Jesus, to cling to God's word, it's all because the Spirit is working in us. 
You see, this work was accomplished thanks to the behind-the-scenes efforts of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is constantly working in our life, including right here, right now, until our very last breath. The Spirit works His ongoing nurturing and, and growing of faith and word and sacrament. He's the one that daily guides our paths to walk in God's will and ways. And so that we are daily and richly blessed as we experience His work each day. And you know, that's so important that the Spirit's working because we're still sinful people. We live in a broken and sin-filled world. We are tempted daily. And the result is that we, at times, we stray. We fall short. We fail utterly and miserably. We know our thoughts and words and deeds that betray us. Our feelings and reactions and inactions show the corruption of the old Adam as he tries to get a foothold in our lives again and again. And he's sometimes successful. But you know, as the Spirit works behind the scenes, he holds up God's law, he convicts us of our shortcomings, not as a punishment, but as a blessing. Because on our own, under, under sin's influence, we wouldn't realize we're sinning. We wouldn't even care. We wouldn't care about God and sin and or one another or even eternity. If it weren't for the work of the Holy Spirit, we would just live self-centered, we would remain poor, miserable sinners, and we would die that way. But the Spirit, behind the scenes, He's the one who is causing us to desire a change in our hearts and minds. Sorrow over sins, it wells up in us. Repentance flows and forgiveness comes and we're set on a new direction. We're walking a life of seeking God's comfort and hope and peace and forgiveness that's found in Jesus alone. You and I, we are constantly being set free from the bonds that would chain and condemn us in our sins. It opened, we are becoming open to hearing the good news that salvation and forgiveness, it really has come. And God made flesh in the birth and the life, the suffering and death of Jesus, our Savior. God is working behind the scenes, and especially through the Holy Spirit, He is working. And it is such a blessing. It was for the disciples who went from hiding putting it all on the line, even their very lives, so that others would hear and believe and have life now and eternally. For those who heard the disciples that day and for the early church, the, the spirits working behind the scenes caused the church to grow and lives be saved. The Holy Spirit's working here and now. And it is a blessing because He is your blessing today. You, each one of you, have been equipped and empowered and strengthened and seen through all things. You have everything you need because you have Jesus thanks to the Spirit. And now that the Spirit's working in and through you, you can go and walk and live and speak as the disciples did about and under Christ. The Holy Spirit has brought us together as his family. And together, as the Holy Spirit works, we can endure anything. Because thanks to the Spirit, we don't carry our burdens alone. Our Lord has given us a family with our Father as just that, the Heavenly Father. And Jesus, his Son, is our brother, right by our side, and his Spirit working. And that's why on Pentecost, Songs like, Come Holy Spirit, God and Lord, are on our lips and in our hearts. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds clinging to Christ as the Holy Spirit works. Amen. At this time, I invite you to rise and we'll profess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God and not me, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. Whose kingdom will have no reigns. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers for today, we lift up those celebrating birthdays, Curtis and Bennett and Brandon and Marie and Gloria and myself. Those celebrating baptismal birthdays this week, uh, Dan and Diane, Dakota and Brianna, Ryan and Evan and Liam, Peter and Jason and Ashton and Eric. We also lift up an anniversary for Chris and Jackie. We also keep in our hearts two of our family members uh, who have lost family. Uh, this past week, Randy Bowers, we keep him and his family and extended family in our prayers on the passing of his mother, Lorraine, yesterday, I believe, or two days ago it was. And we also keep in our prayers Barb Reschke and the Moss family and the extended family on the passing of Barb's brother, Ken, this past week. We join our hearts in prayer. Confident in Jesus, our Savior, we lift up our hearts and voices in prayer to heaven. Faithful Lord, your mercies are new every morning. Even when we stray from your presence through disobedience, you reconcile and restore us in hope. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming Savior, you prepared a place for us in your Father's kingdom and promised to all who trust in you the inheritance of life forever in your presence. Help us with our hearts to believe, rejoice, and with our mouths to confess your saving name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sanctifying Spirit, you fill the lives of all who trust in Jesus. Bring restoration and peace to those who are broken in heart and mind, body and soul. Guide us to find refreshment in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Sovereign King, you are Lord of all things in heaven and on earth. Watch over our community and country. Guide all leaders to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you as their God. Enable us to dwell in security and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Great physician, you give healing to those who cry to you for mercy. Today we lift up before you, especially Randy and Barb and all their extended families on the passing away of loved ones. Lord, give comfort and strength and peace that only you can give in times of loss. See them through their days ahead. Lord, we lift up all in our hearts. Whatever they concern, work, heal, strengthen, and bring relief as you know is best and right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, be with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. Thank you for the past, and we look forward to the future. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. Gracious Lord, we trust that you hear and answer us according to your good and gracious will. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this time, the offering will be brought forward, and as it's brought forward, we'll sing our offertory. <laughs> This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise for our post communion chancel. <laughs>
that whole time. It just looks like Saturday only, but actually on the way Friday evening all the way through till Monday, uh, we'll be in the States for graduation. So uh, please make a note of that. Anything else need to hold? Oh, yes, definitely. One of the things I would, I would encourage you to make sure you come next week and are here uh, because it's confirmation next Sunday. We have three gentlemen who are going to be confirmed. Uh, <coughs> barring that all goes well this week, right? We got a test today. We got a question night Thursday, but uh, all three of these uh, young men are going to be confirmed next week. So we want to uh, encourage you to be here to support them and encourage them and welcome them into our family as community members. Anything else need to be made mention of? Peter? Could the trustees meet under, meet under the bell tower, please, after service? Okay, trustees under the bell tower. There you go. Okay. Just for a minute. Just for a minute. Linda? Uh, vacation Bible School is coming up quickly, so uh, we still need craft people and a music person, and I think there are some other positions that are still open, so if you are able to help us out with that, we would greatly appreciate it. And um, as my husband said last week, if you sign up for crafts, we can help you find crafts, we can help gather supplies. Uh, we just need someone to lead it. Or if you feel like you want to go at it and find good crafts and get all the supplies, that works too. So uh, please consider that and uh, please sign up and uh, check out the other positions that are still available. Is that everything, Cindy? And anniversary preparations are moving forward very nicely. Um, everybody's going to be receiving in a short order um, invitations that you to remind you of the date, and there's going to be a catered meal afterwards and that. So uh, make sure you save the like I save the date for wedding. Save the date and. Uh, and we want everybody to come to that. So that'll be coming up shortly. We're going to start by putting most of the church members in their pigeonholes in the, in the foyer there. But then the ones that aren't here, we'll make sure they get mailed out. Of course, pass on that invitation to those that you know. Um, maybe even some that are former members or went elsewhere or that and that. And if you know them, please encourage them to come back for this celebration as well. Anything else need to make mention of? Yep. Doris. I would just like to draw your attention to a couple of the notes in the bulletin insert. Uh, on June the 11th and 25th, um, trying to encourage your committee members to be here. We would like to take some group photos to be included in the anniversary book that we'll be making. We'll also be updating um, the history of, of since the last anniversary celebration till now. And we've asked the committees too, or the committee heads to go back to their committees and ask them what they feel the important points are, the highlights um, since the last in, you know, anniversary till now, so that we can also um, catch up those in the history book. If you also have or have family members that have historical photos of Zion back through any of the years, it would be great if uh, you could let me know to be able to scan them and return the originals to you. As many of our elderly are going to be passing on, we know that their children or their children's children have no idea what those photos are about. And we don't want to lose the ability to capture these and have them on file. We're hoping to have a slideshow presentation to during the, uh, the supper for the anniversary. You got a bee going on up there. Yeah, yeah no, I'm just watching that. I'll just see if I can. Um, one last thing tying in with the anniversary things, just things to be thinking about for the fall. Um, we are going to let it out, it hasn't been said yet. We are going to do a pictorial directory. We haven't done a photo of a church congregational pictorial directory, we haven't done one of those since 2010. So some of you younger people who aren't even in there yet. So, uh, so that if you over the summer start thinking about things and getting yourself organized, it's not going to be till the fall. But our goal is to be able to have it in order for Christmas time, so that way everybody in the congregation uh, will have a pictorial directory. And if you choose individual photos for yourself, uh, that'll be going on as well. So uh, you'll hear more about that as it comes along. But start thinking about that as well. If nothing else. Go in the Lord's peace. Thanks.